mostly in. We'll get going here. So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jim Hunsinger of Lean Frontiers. Um, if you're new here, welcome to one of our webinars. On the screen, you can see uh, Oscar Roche and Michael Mullenberg from Dazuki. Um, Oscar will be actually at the TWI Summit and the Kata Summit coming up um, this March at Jekyll Island, Georgia. Um, we invite you to come and join him and you can find out more about that if you'd like at leanfrontiers.com backslash 2023 TWI Summit or leanfrontiers.com backslash KataCon9. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Oscar. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And uh, as always with Lean Frontiers, thanks for the platform <clears throat> and the logistics and the work you guys do in the background and putting this together. Michael, thank you for joining us. So I'm just very quickly going to introduce Michael. I'll give you some background on TWI job instruction. It'll take three or four minutes, and then we'll hand over to Michael to cover the far, by far and away the majority of this topic. So Michael's a former operational technology director with 3M with 36 year career in operations, process engineering, product development, Lean Six Sigma, supply chain and strategic planning. He's currently advising and assisting and advancing a variety of manufacturing operations, helping solve real problems and helping drive companies to excellence. So let me very quickly uh, cover job instruction just to establish a bit of a platform here so we're all on the same page. So this will take probably three minutes. So just as a point of introduction, when people and equipment, machines and tools come together to deliver an output, and even if it's just people and tools, there will be risk, there will be problems and risk, and that is normal. In other words, when these, it's perfectly normal. The type of problems that come up really generally fall into three categories. Don't know, can't do. Knows and can, but isn't, an interesting one, and actually the most common. And lastly, hard to do and inefficient. The three countermeasure skills are the skill of instructing, which helps us uh, mitigate or reduce the risk of don't know, can't do. The skill of improving methods, which helps us tackle hard to do and inefficient. And the skill of leading, getting results through people, which helps us tackle uh, knows and can, uh, but isn't. So the TWI program provides three forms of deliberate practice that allow us to develop these skills. The first one is job instruction is gonna be the majority of the topic today that Michael will talk about uh, and how it ties in with technology and Dazuki. Uh, so deliberate practice through job instruction will help develop the skill of instructing, which will allow us to better tackle the problem of don't know, can't do. Deliberate practice through job methods will help us develop the skill of improving methods, uh, which will help us tackle the problem of hard to do and efficient. And job relations, the, the uh, deliberate practice through job relations will help us develop the skill of leading, getting results through people, which will help us with knows and can but isn't. Let's have a quick look at job instruction. Job instruction has three components, three what I call three quality components. One is a good plan, two is a good recipe, and three is good delivery. It, the the uh, deliberate practice helps us develop those three things. Two sides to job instruction. One is the get ready side uh, before we're actually training. Uh, that we develop a training timetable, we break down the job, we get everything ready, we arrange the work site. And then the other side of the card, if you like, is that interaction between two human beings, the learner and the trainer. When we prepare the learner, we demonstrate the work, we pra the learner practices, and then we follow up. That's the human interaction, the part that's so often overlooked. Just to finish, the three components, uh, through finishes the summary of JI, three components, a good plan is the training timetable. A good recipe is break down the job. In other words, what the instructor will say <clears throat> as they teach the job. And this is where uh, Michael will talk a lot more about that. And lastly is good delivery, which is that interaction between two human beings. So that's enough for me. I uh, know one point, sorry, before I finish, an SOP is a really good training recipe, an SOP and what we, what Michael will talk about, the job breakdown, uh, job instruction breakdown, two different things. So that's enough from me. I will now hand over to Michael and he will go through our topic of how TWI and Dazuki have come together and the benefits it can provide. Michael, away you go. Yeah, I'm just trying to minimize my menu here. Um, well, uh, 
Thank you, Oscar, for that introduction, and thank you to Lean Frontiers for hosting today. And um, we are uh, we're going to pack in a lot of information here, um, both about TWI and digital learning methods, and and really uh, you know creating this platform for the front line of the future. Um, you know, as Oscar said, oh my screens are really jumping around here. Uh, hold on, there we go. Use my arrow key instead. Um, so it's great to be here. And yeah, as Oscar said, I, I spent 36 years with 3M. Um, these days I'm, I'm doing some consulting. Um, I'm on the AME Board of Directors and I also work for the Local Manufacturers Alliance. And really my, my whole mantra is this advise, assist, advance. Um, so, you know, sharing information, rolling up my sleeves, helping people uh, you know, on the shop floor or in the boardroom, um, and then really trying to advance um, and, and enhance the experience of our frontline workforce. Wait here, but I really all going to go right to the front line where the, where the value is added. And it's not letting me advance. There we go. So we're going we're gonna to hit four topics really quickly today. Um, you know, the TWI, uh, Dazuki uh, Digital Connection, um, how we can really help writers become better writers. Uh, so empowering the, 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 the people that are creating our work instructions and our training materials. Um, accessing that content, um, really empowering the employees, uh, both, the, both on the uh, instructor side as well as the operator side. Um, and then really everybody benefits at the end of the story here. Everybody becomes a better learner using these modern methods and modern technologies. And really we get to that point of, you know, we do know how to do the work and we can do it. We are equipped to, to perform really well. Um, so section one, you know, how did this all come about? Um, you know, in my mind, I'm going to tell you a little bit of our initial deployment story at 3M um, and sprinkle in some anecdotes from some more recent activities with some smaller companies as well. Um, so, you know, we're all aware of the skills gap. It's been going on for a number of years, uh, maybe, maybe decades, and it just seems to have accelerated um, in the last couple of years. Um, you know, the whole pandemic thing, um, the baby boomer generation, um, just the changes in our culture. And it's not just the United States, it's really a global challenge. And so that's what we're really trying to attack here. Um, but I go back a number of years and, you know, this, this isn't really that new of a slide. Um, you know, some of the research, some of the stats have been updated, but we've had an aging workforce. We've had trouble recruiting. Um, we've had a skill shortage, um, especially as we make more complex processes um, and more automation. And really this idea of frontline digital transformation has been going on for over a decade, but few of us have really met the benchmark. Um, so we're, we're, I, I was joking, say we're, we're still training and documenting and, and moving information around as if it was the 70s um, using three ring binders and you know, whiteboards and memos. So what problem specifically are we trying to solve? Well, when I surveyed our, our plant leaders, plant managers, directors, um, supervisors, you know, they said, hey, complex processes are killing us. Um, the work is just too complicated. I'm losing people. Um, we're making mistakes, which cause quality issues and downtime. And really just onboarding new people takes way too long. So their view was more of a cost view. They're, they're measuring the cost of all these inefficiencies and all these problems. When I went to the front line and, and um, talked to individuals, you know, running operations, making product, they would say, yeah, we don't really have standards. Uh, and if we do, we can't find them. Um, and they're really dry. There's no, there's no pictures. There's no videos. You know, it's easier to go to YouTube and learn stuff than it is to learn how to do my job. And we're still in this mindset of job shadowing versus really training and, and really a competence model. So what, what's happening is the, uh, you know, the employee feels this lack of confidence. And really, it translates into fear. You know, they don't want to make a mistake. Um, they're, they're fearing failure. They might be fearing getting fired. Um, or creating a big quality disruption. And so, you know, management wants to drive out cost and in the front line, we want to drive out fear and, and build confidence. And the common element that we identified was really that training onboarding. And I'll even add the improvement cycle um, as, we, as we look at the actual jobs themselves. M Michael, just on that slide, is it, did you get a view on the frontline leader? And their view, like the front line you've referred to is the worker, I think, from what you're saying. What about the front line leader? I love that slide, actually, but I'm interested in what the front line leader view is and what's their trigger. Yeah, well, and you know what, they're, they're caught between the two. You know, they, they yeah, exactly. realize the, uh, the complexity, 
the turnover, you know, they're trying to fill spots, but they also are caught in that, hey, you know, the, the standards are, are not really established. There's a lot of anecdotal uh, tribal knowledge. Um, you know, they're, they're between a rock and a hard place, frankly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and by the way, that's another whole webinar we can do on, you know, the role of the frontline supervisor and how to remove waste from their job, you know, HR, production reporting, all these things, and get them back to coaching and training to standards. Um, we could do a whole session on that. Yeah, that might be a good topic. <laughs> Thank you. Well, quickly, our, our timeline, you know, I go back to 2017 when I had this discussion and, and actually made that previous slide. And, um, you know, fast forward four years, uh, a little over four years, we ramped up to over 30,000 users of a digital platform. Um, we used some TWI along the way, and we started adding on more formal workshops um, in year four. And now TWI has partnered with Dazuki, the digital uh, platform, um, to closely integrate the methodology with the digitalization, which is really cool. Um, but our, our deployment was, you know, we really, um, our operational technology team, we did the scouting, we looked at vendors, we kept hearing, why can't this be as easy as, you know, YouTube videos? Um, we piloted some things, and finally we chose Dazuki as our platform and started deploying amongst friendlies. Um, we were embedded in a division, we were not part of corporate, so we had about 13 plants where we could play and work with our, our friends and try some things. And so we deployed the software first, um, got people excited. The feedback we got was, hey, standard work is really um, a kind of an awful thing. We don't really like it, but this Dazuki thing is kind of fun. And I like using the mobile device. It's, it changed the conversations we were having. Um, we, had to, we had to come up with a better definition of standard work that we all agreed on. You know, what are the elements we're looking for? Very quickly, when we got to 100, you know, 200, 300 users, uh, we started looking at hardware requirements, uh, mobile devices, um, all the things, all the accessories, charging stations, security, um, even down to cameras and microphones and, and other things that would go along with this platform. So we created another whole project. Another one of my leaders took on a thing and he nicknamed that mobile manufacturing, really bringing mobile devices into the manufacturing environment. Um, in hindsight, we should have thought about the hardware before we got to three, four, five hundred users. Um, but we, 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 had, we had people uh, saying, uh, we want to use the platform, we just need help with the hardware. So we, we moved that along. Um, we started more formally adding in the TWI methodology. You'll hear me say this over and over again. TWI makes authors better authors. It makes teachers better teachers. And it makes learners you know, really learn so they can do the work. It's kind of the secret sauce uh, that, that we overlay on top of this digital platform. Um, finally, step five. Just, just, uh, Michael, if I just want to point of clarity there. When you're talking about TWI method, we, we are specifically talking about job instruction, aren't we? Yes, primarily. Primarily yeah. job instruction. No yeah, we were, we were looking at the whole TWI suite and, and gleaming information from them, but we really jumped in on the, on the JI, and I think you'll see a slide in a, in a bit that shows how we did that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, as I was exiting my, my role at 3M and redeploying, I like to say, um, we were looking at the bottleneck, which was really capturing information. So we were using AR, VR, uh, voice to text, and many other apps, <clears throat> excuse me, to try to capture information and, you know, build up these standards, um, because that was really the slowest part of the process. And, uh, Again, this was kind of a grassroots thing out of one of the divisions. So our typical um, you know, person that we interacted with could be a trainer, could be a lean engineer, could be one of those shift supervisors, as Oscar mentioned. Um, we didn't have a necessarily a, a job description or a profile of a person. We just wanted somebody that was excited about training, onboarding, and improvement. And they became sort of our conduit into each of the factories. Didn't take long. Within within a couple of months, we were getting phone calls from our other 227 plants, saying we want to be next. You know, when are you going to bring it? Um, took us a couple of years to get security and hardware and methodology under underway so we could deploy internationally. But that was very successful in about 2019, 2020. Um, actually, deploying the solution worldwide and just maintaining a support group with our OT group here in St. Paul. 
So, um, you know, Oscar did a great job of covering the, the JI piece of this. There's a slide here on the history of TWI. Really, I just want you to remember that this is sort of the method methodology. This is, this is the secret sauce that just helps everything work better. Um, Dazuki, as we mentioned, is one of many uh, digital platforms. Um, there's a little bit of background, but it's the digital platform that we chose and we're growing with them um, in terms of features and expectations. They're adding features uh, quarterly to the, to the, uh, the product um, based on user feedback. And so that partnership just got formalized last year uh, where they're working together, uh, the methodology and the digital solution. So it's kind of a seamless uh, back and forth uh, terminology and approach, which is, which is really solid. So I'm going to jump ahead to the next section. Um, you know, I, I mentioned the phrase, you know, helping writers become better writers. And this was honestly one of our big gaps. You know, we found some talented people that love to write documents. Um, we're pretty gifted in this area. And we found when we gave them the TWI uh, JI toolkit, they just got a little better and a little better. And some of them went through the more formal um, five and 10 day training. And they just became rock stars in terms of creating content and, and really putting those skills uh, to work in these, in these uh, standard work documents. You know, the, the cost of the bad work constructions, this goes back to the justification was, you know, we were seeing mistakes being made, which is downtime, productivity, people were frustrated and much longer time to competency. And so we really are addressing that head on with, you know, using the TW methodology and the digital platform. And we created a process, um, you know, for people just getting started at a new location, maybe a new value stream, and we nicknamed it Dezookification. And it really is an assessment of, of what, what kind of work you need to do. What standards do you need to write? How do you prioritize them? Who are the experts? And then finally, how are we going to organize this digital content in the platform? And so these are the six steps, uh, walking the line, mapping, talking to people, um, what are your priorities? What are your biggest needs? Looking for information sources, um, you know, existing documents, three ring binders, um, you know, post-it notes stuck to, uh, you know, tuck, stuck inside people's lockers. And then identifying those process experts and treating them with respect and saying, really, we want to learn from you. We want to document your process, your thought process um, to make everybody better. And then applying that digital content layer uh, with the TWI principles uh, in mind as we go. And so, you know, authoring standard work, many of you have seen this, you know, going back and doing work studies and doing the old fashioned uh, standard work form um, was, was very tedious work. Uh, but within the digital platform, now you have a mobile interface, you've got structure within the software that guides you step by step, uh, it, it encourages you to add videos, photos, um, annotations. Um, it, it has a built in peer review and collaboration process we'll talk more about later. And, um, you know, the, uh, the advanced tools are like, as I mentioned, the speech to text and ARVR. So here's, here's the, the key part of the, the job instruction thing um, and, and how we simplified TWI down to how do, we, how do we apply it to this digital platform? And really it comes down to the three columns, the what, how, and the why. Um, what you're trying to do, those important steps, breaking down the job, um, and then having a style guide with your writing where you start with a verb, include a noun, make sure that the step that you're writing is an adding value step. Um, making sure that you're you're commenting on a change in form, fit, or function, and um, those those individual lines are, are things that are advancing the work. Um, the how is kind of the key points, and I, I like putting safety or cautions up on top. The keys to quality, how to make the work easier, um, calibrating using the five senses, um, and comments about that. What what should you observe? What what you know? What can you touch and smell and taste? You know, as you go through the process. And then any other special or additional information, um, background, anecdotes, um, you know, uh, stories from history of the, of the piece of equipment or the way the work is done. And then lastly, the why, um, you know, this needs to align to each important step, the overall process that we're following. Um, we wanna make the job easier to learn and remember um, and, and instilling a why seems to help people with, with that. 
Um, and then obviously we want to support quality cost delivery and safety objectives. And so we bring that into the actual instructions as, as a footnote or a reminder as we go. And really this whole process, it gets the worker more interested in learning the job. It's more comprehensive than just, you know, do as I do or do as I say. Much, much better approach. Um, we found this in practice. And then as we develop content, um, you know, we, we had a scoring system for tracking the guides. You know, the goal was to have these seven pieces of the digital content built in and a, and a good guide would get a perfect score and be green all the way across. So as we, as we build content, we wanna track how we're doing. And so we apply a bit of a project management approach to that. So moving just, quickly to just section uh, before three, you go so, on before you go on Michael I yes, you mentioned it there and I'm conscious of time We've got nine minutes left there's a gentleman asked a question Todd Shadburn has said how is video used to support better training with the job instruction part of it yeah the the videos we've got a couple different styles you know one is embedded right in the guide it's a um, it's a, a no audio video it's just a flyover we call it where it shows the work being done, you know, with various camera angles. And then we've got another approach where we have a, a, a lead expert narrate and actually talk through the work um, as they're doing it. And that could be even down to a, a single step of a single work instruction. You know, this is how I do this step. Um, and then we, uh, you know, there's bullets that list what's being done, but we have the, we have the, the operator actually narrate the video. So is the bullets sort of, in some way aligned to the job instruction breakdown content the what the how the why yes it is yeah okay yeah it's all Very included good. in the bullets i mean the, the main thing is the what but you have the caution you have the notes and the reminders um in between those those uh, specific steps um giving you those other those other elements yep so i'm going to quickly go through the you know the access to the content you know you've got a mobile device here and Obviously, that's the key to the whole thing. QR codes, mobile devices, um, you take it with you, you keep it charged, um, you know, you're, you're running off your Wi-Fi, and we've got some that are running off uh, 5G. And so the whole point is the standards are easy to access. They're very effective tools. You can take it with you to the work. Um, it's not in a workstation or in a conference room somewhere. And you know that you're always working from the current version. So that's the, the real advantage of this mobile and digital platform. Um, yeah, here's an example on the right. There's a picture with annotations, a couple of steps, and then there's some safety uh, concerns in red. Um, you know, there's a, there's a misnomer that digital means self-study. And, you know, yes, we, we develop standard work, but the trainer role is extremely important in walking through this uh, standard uh, with a new employee. And then in the future, they will use it more as a quick reference, reminder, troubleshooting, alerts. And certainly we want them to use the bottom part here, which is the self-improving. There's a comment field on every step of every guide where they can say, now that doesn't make sense to me. I can get a better picture. This is the way I do it. And we have rapid turnaround on these improvements. Um, so the, the, the idea of participating and improving the standards and having a trainer uh, actively participated in the training is still very, very important to our process. Some people think once you digitize, it's just, you know, you go off and you, you, you read and you study and watch videos and that's how you learn. And that's, that's not true. Um, again, I mentioned mobile devices, you know, we, we took the, the pads themselves, but we added ARV. Sorry, can I just, can I just grab you there, Michael? Yes. Um, and that's the bit that's so important is the, that real learning is an interaction between two human beings. So one thing, I think you've stressed it, but we want to stress here that we're not circumnavigating that interaction between you two human beings and saying we don't need that anymore. We, we no, still need not. that. We've just got a more efficient way of doing it. And we do. And the, actually, the trainers really appreciate having this mobile digital standard as kind of their script. They're still telling their story. They're still demonstrating the work. But they are definitely following a more rigid standard now that they have it in their hand. Um, so that's that's another benefit to the trainer. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, the mobile devices, uh, I got to jump back ahead here, um, are very important. What we found um, just quickly is that, you know, Dazuki was one application, Microsoft Teams, 
um, uh, you know, access to production reporting. Um, it didn't take long and people had innovated on the shop floor that they were running more than 50 different apps in production on this mobile device. So one of my messages is don't hesitate, jump into the mobile arena and just get started because there's all kinds of things that you can do in operations with these mobile devices. Okay, last section, I'll bring this in for a landing here. Um, so how do learners become better learners uh, you know, with this process? Um, you know, Everybody's got training programs, but when you start asking how the work is done and how people are trained, you get, you get a really uh, interesting story. Um, it's weak at best. So the idea of having you know, pictures and annotations and um, you know, very specific brief work instructions, um, the videos, the qualified trainer, the qualified expert, these are all things that, that make this learning environment much, much more rich rather than job shadowing um, or you know, sitting in a conference room. Um, you know, we help the learners through this collaborative process. Uh, the digital tools allows us to track progress, give recognition for those people that are you know, completing the learning activities. There's always a continuous improvement element. You know, that's on day one. We've had operators, their first day on the job, made suggestions to these work standards in the digital platform. And that suggestion was implemented by the next morning. And so they feel part of it. Uh, they want to be part of it. Um, and then, you know, they can also chat back and forth. They can, they can make a suggestion. Somebody can comment on that suggestion. They can build on it and, and build, build this whole, um, you know, group of feedback, not just not just single point feedback. And then obviously, you know, down the road, you get to a skills matrix, you can you can measure how how cross functionally your team is trained, you can get into quizzing training observations where you you catch video, um, or still shots of people doing the work correctly. Um, and then you can also schedule your training and have things come up automatically for review in this digital environment. So it really becomes more of a learning management system than just a standard system. Um, last comments here, you know, people always ask me, where do you start? You know, I've got 5,000 operations, I've got 91,000 employees, I've got 227 plants. And we started small with friendlies and we just, we went through the processes and, and found out where there was frequent turnover, um, where there were safety concerns, complexity, um, infrequent operations that we don't do very often. Maybe somebody that was getting ready to retire that was, we, we call them an artisan or a craftsman. They have all the knowledge in their head, but they're getting ready to leave. Um, obviously quality. Uh, and then my favorite is startup shutdown and changeover, just general operations. It's always a good day to work on changeover. And so just, it's a new approach, um, you know, to an old problem, uh, you know, digital plus TWI, uh, that's kind of the, the secret sauce with this digital platform. And, you know, again, last, last slide here, um, you know, I encourage you to think about your definition of standard work, investigate TWI, uh, the JI portion especially, look at digital platforms um, like Dazuki, look at the other digital tools that are out there for capturing knowledge um, and manipulating digital data, and then create a 90-day plan. You know, we found passionate people that wanted to improve and wanted to develop this. Um, we had to develop our own understanding of standard work. Um, we had to consider the TWI methodology in small bites at first. Um, we went digital. We jumped all in. Uh, we had sponsorship to, to go big. And we really are thinking long term. You know, we're four or five years in. I know companies that are a year in and they've got 10,000 documents and they've got everybody using the training program because they've, they've got a, a much smaller population, you know, 200 to 500 employees. And so really our outcomes is we want, you know, competent and confident employees, two Cs, and we want them connected and courageous, connected to the work, connected to improvement, and, and just, um, you know, fearless about making suggestions and trying to improve the work. So that's really, that's really where, this, where this leads you um, on this path of improvement. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if there's any other questions, Oscar. Um, you can reach me at uh, michael at mullenberg.net um, if you have follow-up questions or you want to learn more. Um, I encourage you to tune in to the Voices of Manufacturing podcast. We talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Um, or visit our sponsor, uh, Dazuki, which is just Dazuki, D-O-Z-U-K-I.com. Michael, thank you very much. Your timing's perfect.
Uh, <laughs> so we won't take any more questions. But as Michael said, there are a couple there, but please feel free to uh, email Michael directly. And I know he'll answer specifically. If you have any TWI specific questions, then just uh, jump on the TWI Institute website and you can submit questions through that. Michael, thank you for your time uh, and the content there. That was very good. Uh, much, very much appreciated. I know it takes a little bit of time to put this stuff together. So, uh, and uh, we value that. Thank well, you. Well, you're very welcome. And yeah, I told you I was going to go fast. And uh, I'm no, you did well. happy there to one... uh, answer questions offline. Thank you. While we're both here, what somebody I noticed has asked for the slides. Is there any, can they, if you, are you able to send that slide deck to Jim and he can send it out with the recording link? Uh, yes, I will. I, I'll convert it to a PDF, Jim, and I'll, I'll shoot that over to you this afternoon. Okay. Good. And then it'll go out with the link to the recording. Thank you very much. Again, Michael, thanks heaps. Thanks, everyone. All right. Well, thank you, Oscar and Michael, for presenting today. And thank you, everyone, for uh, participating in today's webinar. Um, yeah, as mentioned, remember, we will you will receive a link to the recording within a few days. And hopefully we'll uh, you'll be able to join us at the CWI Summit and Kata Summit um, next month. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. So have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, everybody.